Today, we embark on a journey to understand the signs that have already started but remain unnoticed by many. As we navigate through the pages of scripture, we often find ourselves intrigued by prophecies and mysteries surrounding the significant event. Scripture speaks of the end times and the coming of the Antichrist in various passages, such as Daniel, Revelation, and the teachings of Jesus himself in the Gospels. Despite the clarity of these prophecies, many remain oblivious to the signs unfolding around them. The subtle beginnings of these events often escape our attention. Daniel 8, 23-25 And in the latter time of their kingdom, when the transgressors are come to the full, a king of fierce countenance and understanding dark sentences shall stand up, and his power shall be mighty, but not by his own power, and he shall destroy wonderfully, and shall prosper, and practice, and shall destroy the mighty and the holy people, and through his policy also he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand, and he shall magnify himself in his heart, and by peace shall destroy many. He shall also stand up against the prince of princes, but he shall be broken without hand. The prophecy in this passage applies equally well to both Antiochus and the Antichrist. Antiochus was a historical figure who ruled as a Seleucid king in the second century BC. He is primarily known for his oppressive policies and persecution of the Jewish people in Judea. He attempted to Hellenize the Jewish population by imposing Greek culture, religion and practices on them, including the worship of Greek gods and idols in the Jewish temple in Jerusalem. It serves as an example of a prophetic passage with dual fulfillments, one in the near past and one in the distant future. The description of a king of fierce countenance and understanding dark sentences shall stand up, depicts a ruler with a stern appearance and the ability to comprehend cryptic or enigmatic statements. Antiochus Epiphanes was notorious for his cruel brutality, and this characteristic will also apply to the future Antichrist. Here are five key aspects of Antiochus Epiphanes' brutality. 1. Persecution of Judaism. He banned Jewish religious practices, including the Sabbath and circumcision. 2. The desecration of the temple. Antiochus IV ordered the altar in the temple to be defiled with pagan sacrifices, and he erected an altar to Zeus within the temple. 3. Forced Hellenization. He imposed the worship of Greek gods and idols upon the Jews, with severe penalties for those who resisted or practiced their own faith. 4. Harsh Punishments. Antiochus IV's regime was characterized by brutal punishments for those who defied his orders or continued to practice Judaism. Many Jews faced persecution, torture and death for their refusal to abandon their faith or conform to Hellenistic practices. 5. Suppression of Dissent. Antiochus IV was intolerant of any form of dissent or resistance. He used military force to suppress any opposition to his policies and to maintain control over his empire. As we delve into the topic of the New World Order and its biblical implications, it's crucial to recognize that the passages we've discussed, including Daniel 8, 25 provide us with valuable insights into the spiritual and geopolitical forces at play. These scriptures not only shed light on historical events like the reign of Antiochus, Epiphanes, but also offer a glimpse into the prophetic future where the Antichrist, a figure of great power and malevolence, will emerge. Revelation 13 in particular offers a detailed account of the emergence of the beast from the sea and the beast from the earth. These two beasts represent two individuals, one being the Antichrist and the other being the false prophet, both aligned against God's plan. The imagery of the first beast's fierce countenance and blasphemous actions resonates with the characteristics described in Daniel 8. 
this connection between the prophecies of Daniel and Revelation underscores the consistency of God's message throughout Scripture. In Revelation 13, 1-10, we see the beast from the sea rising to power and people worshipping it. As previously stated, this beast is the Antichrist, who will wield great political and religious authority over the world. The New World Order is a theory that posits the idea that at some point, political systems worldwide will no longer be divided, but will instead come under a single form of governance and leadership. This theory typically suggests a scenario in which a select group of powerful elites, often associated with governments, corporations, or international organizations, are thought to be collaborating to manipulate global events and mold the future to their advantage. It is essential to clarify that the term the New World Order is not explicitly mentioned in the Bible. However, the Bible does provide insights into a time when the Antichrist will have complete control over the world and its systems. These biblical prophecies, such as Revelation 13, give us a glimpse into the future, where a powerful individual, closely associated with a world-dominating government, will rise to power. Revelation 13:16 states, And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. This passage describes a scenario where the Antichrist, through his government, mandates a mark on individuals without which they cannot participate in the economy. This mark is a symbol of allegiance to the Antichrist's rule and represents a chilling form of control over the world's population. All indications in Revelation 13 suggest that the beast mentioned is a person, the Antichrist although closely identified with his world-dominating government. This alignment between the ruler and his government underscores the magnitude of the Antichrist's authority and influence in the prophesied end times. As previously mentioned, one of the most significant impacts of a one-world government would be felt within the economic sector. According to the Bible, the beast will compel individuals, regardless of their status, whether they are great or small, rich or poor, free or bound, to receive a mark on either their foreheads or right hands. Without this mark, they will be unable to engage in any economic or financial transactions. As believers, it is crucial to study and discern these prophecies to better understand the challenges and spiritual warfare that may arise in the future. Our faith trust in God, and knowledge of these prophecies will guide us in uncertain times.